During the Cold War, Southeast Asia was again on the front line. The region was split between communist and non-communist states. Vietnam became the battlefield for a proxy war between the two camps. Meanwhile, China supported communist insurgencies and promoted armed revolution in the non-communist countries, including Malaysia and Singapore. This was the backdrop when the five non-communist countries in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, Thailand, came together to form ASEAN in 1967. It was a remarkable act of statesmanship. Several of the partners had a recent history of conflict with one another, and the wounds had yet to heal fully. But with ASEAN, the five countries eschewed conflict and took the path of dialogue, cooperation, and friendship. We integrated into the world economy, linked up with the advanced countries, and thrived. Meanwhile, the communist countries in Indochina were held back for decades by successive wars and the rigidity of their command economies. After the Cold War ended, the U.S. became the sole superpower. Southeast Asia entered a new phase. The Indo-Chinese wars finally ended and the Indo-Chinese communist countries opened up. Earlier, Vietnam had invaded Cambodia, thus posing a serious threat to its non-communist neighbors. But now, Vietnam joined ASEAN, together with Cambodia, Laos, and Myanmar. During the Cold War, the communist bloc sought to export communism to the world. But China today is not attempting to turn other countries communist. Indeed, it's often criticized for being too willing to do business with countries and leaders regardless of their reputation or standing, citing non-interference in the internal affairs of other countries.